In this video, we're going to come up with a notion of when two spaces are homotopy equivalent. So we've seen when two loops are homotopic, this is going to be a different but related notion of when two spaces are homotopy equivalent. And the idea is that you should be able to deform one of them into the other. So I think an example I mentioned maybe in an earlier video is the theta graph. It looks like a sideways theta uh, and the figure eight again looks like a sideways figure eight uh, a homotopy equivalent because i can just crush this red strut down to a point in a sort of continuous way so we'll see a proof of this uh, in a later video when we've done the homotopy extension principle um, but for now i just want to define what it means for these spaces to be homotopy equivalent the reason this is going to be useful is because if you have two spaces that are homotopy equivalent, the fundamental groups are the same, uh, isomorphic. So eventually we're going to be able to compute fundamental groups by just looking at a space and saying, ah, it's homotopy equivalent to a circle, therefore its fundamental group is Z. That kind of thing. But before I tell you what it means for two spaces to be homotopy equivalent, I have to tell you what it means for two maps to be homotopic. And this is much more closely related to what we've seen with loops already. So here's a definition. If uh, F and G are maps from a space X to a space Y, continuous maps, then we say they are homotopic if, well, thinking back to the definition of homotopy, there exists a homotopy, H, which is now going to be defined on X cross the interval. In other words, we're introducing an extra variable, taking values of Y, This is a continuous map called a homotopy, uh, such that H of X zero, so when this coordinate is zero, is F of X for all X, and H of X one is G of X for all X. Right, so this is very similar to the definition of a free homotopy of loops. Free homotopy of loops is where X is the circle. So if X equals S1, we get the notion of free homotopy of loops. So often um, we'll think of this as just a one parameter family of maps. So we'll write F subscript S of X for H X S. So this second variable, instead of thinking of it as part of the domain of the function, we'll think of it as a parameter giving us a one parameter family of functions. So you should think of a homotopy of maps as a continuous family of maps interpolating between F and G. So this is the analog of a free homotopy. If I want the analog of a based homotopy, let me um, say what that is. Um, if A is a subset of X, for example, if X was the interval and A was a pair of base points, this would um, that would be the, the kind of thing we're going to have, um, such that F restricted to A equals G restricted to A, then we say H is a homotopy rel A, in other words, relative to a if 
h of x s um, is independent of s for all x in a right, so the two functions agree on this set a and we're assuming the homotopy is just constant on that in, in the s direction on that set so this would this would be like based homotopy and both of these are useful notions so let me give you an example um, let x be equal to y equal to rn and let f be the identity map from Rn to itself, and let G be the constant map. So G of X equals maybe the origin for all X. So these guys are homotopic. The identity is homotopic to a constant map. Uh, which you can get by just rescaling by s. All right, so when s is 1, you get h of s comma 1 equals uh, x. So that's the identity, that's f. And when s is 0, you get 0 times x. So you get a homotopy from, well, I guess this is a homotopy from g to f. And again, we're going to write homotopy as this, uh, uh, maybe I should do it up here, squiggly line F is homotopic to G. So for Rn, we've just seen the identity map is homotopic to the constant map. Now that's quite an unusual occurrence. So it's got a name, the space X is called contractible. If the identity on X is homotopic to a constant map. So if you have such a homotopy from the identity to a constant map, that's called a null homotopy. is showing that Rn is contractible. This is essentially saying Rn looks, from the point of view of topology, like a point. We can just contract it down to a point and we haven't really done anything from the point of view of topology. And we've done masses geometrically we've contracted like infinite amount of volume down to a point but if there's no notion of distances or volumes you don't care about that all the topology can just be contracted away and that leads us to the definition of a homotopy equivalence of spaces let me get a new page So a homeomorphism, remember, is a continuous map from a topological space X to a space Y, which is invertible and its inverse is also continuous. So that's the kind of thing you want to be an equivalence. But now we're going to talk about maps which are maybe not bijective, but they're still going to be equivalences in some sense. So a homotopy equivalence or a map f is called a homotopy equivalence if there's a map going the other way which 
doesn't have to be an inverse. These are continuous maps. Such that, well, if I look at F composed G and G composed F, they might not be the identity because these might not be bijections, but they're homotopic to the identity. So this one, it, this is do G first, then do F. So you do G, you go from Y to X and then back to Y. So this has to be homotopic to the identity on Y, and this one has to be homotopic to the identity on X. So F does not have to be invertible, but it admits what's called a homotopy inverse. This is a homotopy inverse. In other words, you almost have that F composed G is the identity, but you only have it up to homotopy. You almost have that G composed F is the identity, but you only have it up to homotopy. So if there exists a homotopy equivalence, from x to y, then we say x and y are homotopy equivalent. So just as a easy first case of this, let's check that a contractible space like Rn is homotopy equivalent to a point. Just a, a space with one point. We don't even need to say what's a point. There's only one topology you can put on that. You know, the empty set and the whole space being the uh, open sets. Okay, so a contractible space is homotopy equivalent to a point. Why is that? Well, what's the map F going to be? Well, I should give this point a name. Let's call it P. So this map has got to send every point of X to the point P because that's the only place it can go. And the homotopy inverse is a map that goes from a singleton set to X, so it just picks a point in X um, and sends P to that point. Uh, so let's say X0 for some specific X0 in X. We, we can pick which one it is. Uh, okay, so let's see. F compose G and G compose F. Which of these is going to be easier? Well, if I do, if I start off at, at the singleton set P and go via G to X, I end up at X0 and then I go via this map F and I end up back at P. So that's this composition starting with G then doing F. This is just the constant map or the identity map even. This is the identity map on the singleton set P because P goes back to P. So this is in particular homotopy equivalent, oh, sorry, homotopic to the identity because it's actually equal to the identity. In the other direction, if I start off at X, I map to P and then I include that point in X, then this map is the constant map that sends everything to x0. And a contractible space is one for which the constant map is homotopic to the identity map. So that means g compose f is constant, so it's homotopic to the identity map on x, as x is contractible. So this proves that f and g are homotopy inverse to one another. So in the next video I'm going to prove for you that 
if you have two homotopy equivalent spaces, they have the same isomorphic fundamental groups. Um, but before I do that, I want to give you some intuition for homotopy because this definition, uh, I don't know, it, it looks a bit odd uh, if you've never seen it before, and it doesn't really give you an idea of what homotopy equivalent spaces might look like. So let's look at some examples. So for example, if I take um, something like this, the subset of the plane, it's shaped like this. This is not a genus 2 surface that sticks out into 3D, this is just a subset of the plane. Then I claim that's homotopy equivalent to the figure 8. Basically because you can just squish it down like this. So what do I mean when I draw these arrows and say squish it down? What's that got to do with this definition of homotopy equivalence I gave before? Well, if F is the inclusion of the figure 8 into this guy, and G is, it's got to be a map going the other way, then what I'm drawing with these red arrows is, first of all, G, right? So this is, this uh, these red arrows show uh, where points go under G. But also, implicitly, I'm saying that if you do G first, then F, that's a map that goes from this uh, two-dimensional shape down to just this skeletal figure eight that sits in the middle of it, and then embeds that figure eight into this figure thing then this is homotopic to the identity on this shape. And the homotopy you get by following these red arrows. So they also show the homotopy. From F composed G to the identity. Okay, so I'm not going to prove that this is a homotopy equivalence, but this is the kind of thing you should have in mind. If I draw a picture with lots of arrows saying you can squish this in this direction, I'm implicitly telling you some maps and some homotopies between maps. Let's see another, another example. If I take a ball, a solid ball of clay in 3D, and I poke a finger through it all the way through, so I make a hole. Goes through like that. What have I got? Well, you can kind of see there's a circle here that goes around this tube. Maybe I'll just make it clearer that it goes around the tube. And circles this tube. And I claim that by doing something like this, you can squish the clay down onto that inner ring. So in other words, uh, if I take ball minus tube like I drew, that's homotopy equivalent to the circle. So some examples you might like to think about which are really nice. Uh, if I take R3 and I just cut out a circle in say the XY plane, 
otherwise known as an unknot, just an unknotted circle. What do I get? This is homotopy equivalent to something um, of lower dimension, right? This is three dimensional. I'm cutting out a one dimensional thing from a three dimensional thing. But it's actually homotopy equivalent to something lower dimensional. What do I get? Or what happens if I cut out two circles? Like this one and this one. It's a good exercise to think about, right? What what are the spaces I get up to homotopy if I start cutting things out of other things? 